بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وسيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم افتح علينا فتحا مبينا وارزقنا رزقا مباركا كريما رب اشرح لنا صدورنا ويسر لنا أمورنا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا حبيبنا وقدرتنا ونور أعيننا وصدورنا رسولنا الكريم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل عليه ألف ألف صلاة وألف ألف تسليم وبعت عليه ألف ألف بركة اللهم أمين اللهم أمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Good to see all of you All these uh, shining beautiful faces in the morning Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen For beginning our day A day um, that is counted for us it's, it's a day in our journeys Short, little, tiny probationary journeys in this life that Allah begins it with a son of his remembrance for you and me to gather in the remembrance of Allah Azzajal, to be steered towards this banquet beautiful blissful banquet of splendor of his Quran of his words what better treatment for the soul and breakfast for the heart than the food of Allah's provision for the hearts and the souls that they can sustain us inshallah that this day becomes a day that testifies for you and me. Ya Allah, make us feel your presence, make us feel your angels, make us feel your rahmah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, pour on us from the infinite jewels and the splendor of your Qur'an. You're about to make us reflect upon the beautiful surah of Naba, and Naba that begins the 30th juz, Ya Allah. You're the one who brought us to reflect upon it. We cannot reflect on anything understand anything without you Allah Ya Allah pour, out, pour on us from your rahmah from your beauty tantalize our hearts and souls make us see the signs Ya Allah make us see the, your universe make us uh, deepen our faith in this hour long journey Allahumma ameen Allahumma ameen Surah Al-Naba a surah that begins the 30th juz of the Quran and as we've said before the grand emphasis of this part of the Quran in fact the majority of the Quran is 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 really highlighting this powerful essential existential theme we're returning back to Allah there's nothing else that can be emphasized more in our journeys and the just in particular pays attention or lays emphasis on the promised day of Allah that you and I cannot forget this ultimate absolute it needs to be hammered over and over. It needs to be emphasized over and over. It's not enough for you and me to just hear about it here and there. Allah's pattern in the Quran should inform you and me as to what we need to emphasize in our lives. The priorities. We tend to argue with Allah as to what the priorities are. We think we understand. We don't understand anything. May Allah humble us to understand and see the light of his haqq. Where Allah takes us, we need to go and open our hearts. And here he is spending the whole 30th, 30th just, and I've heard here and there you come across interesting reflections or insights or, no, excuse me, interpretations or opinions of people who say, oh, why is the Quran talking so much about the hereafter? Why is the Quran talking so much about the hellfire? Why is the Quran talking so much about the day of judgment? It's scary, it's scary, it's scary, right? Discomforting. Well, we can be discomforted, but it doesn't mean it's good for us that we're not discomforted. No, this discomfort is yielding or unleashing, should unleash this incredible positive energy in you and me. Because somebody needs to awaken us to what truth is, we can delude ourselves. Keep that in mind as we go through the 30 years. Otherwise, after a while you might say that, oh, I've already heard this. No, you haven't. I haven't. You need to hear it. Whatever Allah de determines and deems to be important, He's the creator and the source, the servant says, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, pour on me more. Show me, Ya Allah. Walk me, Ya Allah. Humble me, Ya Allah. Allow me to make my opinion subservient to your opinion, right? My thoughts subservient to your thoughts. You're the source of everything, Ya Allah. Surah al begins this journey of the theory, theory just by emphasizing this grand concept, the most important question of our lives. And Allah Ajal has broken up this surah into uh let's say six sections uh let me just see six sections yes uh in which in which 
he he details this beautiful portrait account establishing the case for this day of judgment and what we need to th think about and the correlations keep in mind the correlation the parallels between this world and the next world and the interconnected with them the evidence is there the evidence is there we've reflected on how we interpret signs last time when we spoke of, of, of surah uh, al mursal excuse me one second actually you know what I, i'm talking about can somebody actually help me i'm pulling a blank did we do surah al mursalat or no Did we yes. have, that's what we did last time, right? Correct? Yes. Okay, so we did Surah al Mursalat. So just making sure that we're in the right place. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So Allah Azza wa we've seen this last time where Allah Azza wa has, has, has taken us through a journey. Can we, can we just mute ourselves, inshallah, if you can? Yeah. He, 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 he enlightens us as to how to interpret the thoughts around us. And we're going to try to do the same, inshallah, today. So Allah Azza provides us again argument, detailed account as to how we need to interconnect or see the interconnections and the parallels between this world and the next world to really see the inevitability and the promise of the Day of Judgment and the next world and how they're not only um, a sure thing to happen, but we can actually derive insights about them from our actions of this life. Let's inshallah begin right away, seg into this. This the main theme again is the grand news and Naba in Arabic language means the grand news um, Naba is 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 something that is about you know an inf piece of information a piece of news about something that is about to happen right so Allah entitles the surah with that powerful concept because it is it is it is the theme that is knitted through the whole surah so Allah begins it you know we've seen examples where he begins with an oath to draw our attention. He wants us to activate our intellects, not just the physical intellect, but the spiritual intellect, right? The spiritual heart to start to see. When we open ourselves, we'll see. Here, Allah doesn't begin with an oath, but begins with a rhetorical question, right? It's 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 to take us to something sacred and, and an important. So Allah begins it by asking a question. Excuse me, let me just try to... Uh, just mute everybody inshallah. Okay. So Allah begins the question by saying, about what are they asking? About what are they disputing? What is Allah Azza wa Jal talking about? What Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about or is referring to is you know uh, the reaction of the of of, of uh, the idolaters of Mecca to the message of Rasulullah. And what is the most important thing in the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And the message of the Quran is that you and I came from Allah, if you were to summarize it, and to Him we return. And this life is a preparation for that return. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajun. Everything that happens in life shakes your core, shakes my core, to awaken us out of the sleep and wake up to this reality. There's a sun that is going to shine one day and it's the sun of the next world, right? So they're disputing it. They're in denial of it because the idolaters of Mecca want to stay sleeping in their whole world and they love to just pursue their whims and desires they want to maintain the status quo of injustice in mecca they don't want to let it go so the the quickest thing to deal with this psychologically is to deny the truth and listen to your own truths come up with our own delusions about what truth is we feed ourselves lies so they are feeding themselves lies but they were so arrogant they started to actually dispute how can you possibly dispute about something you don't know? So they're, here they are, they're giving opinions about a reality they have no access to. They're saying there could be no next world. Just as, you know, this is really interesting and intriguing. And, and enough for you and me to laugh. When people say there's no God, you know, it's one thing to say, prove to me God exists, but it's quite another to definitively say there's no God. How do you know? How do I know? How does someone establish and prove with evidence that there is no, there's uh, the, the, that um, something doesn't exist? It's impossible because there's always other realms, other spaces you haven't seen. So how can you say that for sure something is not there? Impossible, right? Sure, somebody might say, ah, you know, uh, you know, I don't have, the, I can't see the evidence, this and that, but they cannot say it definitely doesn't exist. 
So here's a people who are denying something they have no knowledge of whatsoever. They cannot actually disprove, which is the existence of the next world. It's actually already there, awaiting to unveil. So they're disputing out of their arrogance, they're in denial, they're in contention, but it's not um, like a rational discussion. It's not a rational discussion. It's an argumentative, arrogant discussion. They're actually rebelling and mocking the notion of the next world. They're saying, well, what kind of a joke is that? We're going to die. Our bodies are going to be reduced to dust. And then this dust and these crumbled bones are going to just come together, right? Reconstruct themselves. And somehow we're going to appear into the next world. Away with this. They're laughing at us. They're mocking it. So that's a, re you know, reveals their psychology. In their hearts, there's ego. In their hearts, there is ever there is arrogance. So it's not an innocent denial. Allah Azza says, "What are they asking and disputing? Are they asking about this? Are they disputing about an naba? Not just news, the greatest of news, al azim the greatest, mightiest, most glorious news. If I ask you, what's the most important news?" You should be interested in learning about what would you say what's the headline right the headline of the day elections wars this that coronavirus allah says Naba al azim is the day of judgment but he doesn't talk about it here he merely poses the question because the answer is obvious and you know where he's going to answer the question this is section one of the surah later he's saying are you dispute what are you disputing about right about the great news and he calls it great as if to alert them wake up it's the greatest thing if you were to know then he says the one the, the piece of news that they're differing about it's like somebody denying coronavirus for example like people will call them fools out of their minds right it's there everybody can witness the effect of it similarly Allah is telling us there's great the great news about the greatest event in our lives right and are they disputing about without any knowledge? So they didn't, Allah doesn't refer to the Day of Judgment here. He just asked the question. You know what he answers them with? Pay attention here. He says, كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Okay, they'll know. It's like, I'm, you know, you, two people are, are, are discussing a matter or de, de, debating a matter and somebody really doesn't want to see. The other person says, what am I going to do for you? Okay, you'll know. That's it. That's all, all I can say. As you'll know. I, I can't possibly present you with evidence anymore because you don't want to be convinced. That's fine. You'll know. Nay shall they shall know. Nay they shall know. Know what? Well, one day it's going to appear. Itself is going to appear and there is no veil to, to shield it anymore. So it's going to appear. They're going to know it's a certain truth. But also, brothers and sisters, they're going to see also that everything that they are living the life that they're living is so interconnected to that life they shall see it also in their own world the promises of the truth of allah the promises of the truth of allah are not things that are going to be just fulfilled later they're going to be fulfilled here as well to an extent right so they're going to know all of that they're going to see it and they themselves will arrive at the conclusions allah doesn't need to show anything anymore right the evidence the signs of allah are already there but it's the human being who chooses to blind themselves the human being allah tells us our nature pay attention to all to allah you know showing us illustrating to us your psychology my psychology wallahi the quran teaches us so much about ourselves the most conscious people the best of people are the ones who know themselves as the scholars tell us Whoever knows themselves knows know Allah. Most people are, do not know themselves. They're in denial. They're separated from themselves. They can see everything else, but they can't see themselves. They cannot. And when they're reminded of themselves, they're arrogant about it. Right? Jadala. The human being is born argumentative. Allah tells us he loves to argue, loves to delude himself. The message of the Quran polishes us. The rem remembrance of Allah and the truth polishes us. The soul so that you have a mirror that reflects you know your image upon yourself like you see yourself so clearly and when you see the internals your construction you know your journey you begin to see the evidence of allah's presence in your life that he made you and made me and then you know you learn your nature able to work with your nature 
We're blind to our nature. We cannot work with our nature. So here's Allah telling us, know your nature. We argue. Then Allah says, you shall know, nay, you shall know. He doesn't tell us what that great news is. It's evident. Here's how he's going to establish that day, the, the great news. Section 2. You know what he does? Powerful methodology that you and I need to again draw inspiration and insights from when we try to present this argument for other people, our children, our families, our communities to help their minds and their intellects work through this beautiful journey of life to derive the conclusions from the science. So here's what Allah does in, in, in section 2 which begins with verse 6 and ends at 16, 10, 11 verses that present or draw for you, I mean, a portrait of the signs of Allah from our world. And he's going to show us here how these signs take us to the ultimate inevitable conclusion of the Day of Judgment. You don't even need revelation. If we know how to look at the signs and open our hearts and minds to them, they themselves will take us to the conclusion there must be another universe, the next world, and it's interconnected to this world. The signs of Allah that he presents in this, uh, in this section of 11 verses or so are broken up into uh, three categories, but you can possibly say fourth. Allah is going to present to us uh, signs, he's going he's gonna to give us uh, or invite us to reflect upon signs from our worldly nature, from our earthly nature, let's say, nature on earth, to reflect upon. Then he's going to take us into signs about our own nature, the psychology of the human being, how this human being, you know, feels and so on and so forth. Facts about us, natural facts about us. So that's a second category. The third category of signs is the heavenly signs above us, the sun, sky, you know, um, night and day and so on and so forth. Things that are above us, the stars, right? That's a third. And then the fourth category is how they're all interconnected, as if they're all subsystems that connect with each other. They're needed with each other, right? Conveying certain lessons for you and me. So what does Allah say? I'm going to, inshallah, just uh, translate it quickly and then go back and take a mini uh, tour through it with you. Allah says, the answer to the question about the great news is, is this. He doesn't say, oh, it's a day of judgment. He says, hmm, have we not made, this is the uh, first category, have we not made earth spread out like a carpet for you to live on? Easy to, habit, to, to inhabit, to walk on, etc. Have we not made the mountain specks on this carpet of this earth? Have we not turned you, now the second category, you, your nature, my nature, have we not turned you into pairs, ordered pairs of male and female? Have we not made your, look at this now, still about us. Have we not made your sleep repose for you, a, a, a time of rest and repose? Have we not made the night, have we not made the night a covering for you? Have we not made the day a time and a place for your work and your activity to pursue your provision have we now he's now he goes up have we not have we not made the seven heavens powerful and mighty and solid have we not within that realm made a sun or brought a sun that serves as this blazing lamp have we not within that realm that space as well bring forth for you clouds that deliver this fresh water in abundance and that allow on earth, back to earth, the production of abundant harvest and and multitudes of, you know, of, of gardens and growths. Then Allah Ajal segs into section 3 saying, Inna yawm al -fasli kana miqata. Indeed, section 3, verse 17, Indeed, the day of separation is timed. SubhanAllah, I was like, wow. So, and the answer to the question of verse 1 came in verse 17. Mm, in the the day of separation is timed. Timed, why is Allah saying miqat? Miqat is, uh, you know, in, in you go to Umrah and, and, and Hajj, there's there's locations called al miqat. So, when we took our Umrah trips, like we went as a group and Abyar Ali outside of Medina, is 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 a, is a place that is that begins the timing of the Umrah journey. So there are different locations around Mecca, 
depending on the destination you're coming from, in which, from which you need to begin, commence your spiritual journey, your sacred journey of Amr and Hajj. You, 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 you go to that location, you renew your intention, you say, oh Allah, I intend the Umrah, I intend the Hajj. It's called Miqat. It's timed. You cannot cross it without a, that intention. You cannot. It nullifies the whole thing if you, have, if you haven't done that. And there are particular rituals we, you, you ought to do. I mean, they don't spoil necessarily the Umrah or the Hajj, but you have to observe them in, in, in conformance with the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Time, Miqat. Miqat is a reference to anything that has a timing. It's a ticking clock. Why is he emphasizing ticking clock? Go back to the science, the four categories. Let's inshallah, like, it's very juicy. I ask Allah to, to me, that he allows us to see this and see the inner layers of this. So Allah begins by talking about earth. He says, have I not made earth spread out like mihada carpet? Who rolled out, Who rolled earth like this, brothers and sisters? Who made it not just a globe, but a habitable globe that is easy to walk on and, and, and create roads on it and rivers flow in it to deliver this incredible economic system that delivers the provision to you. And, and, and again, imagine if it was all like mountains and and hills and valleys, the whole thing. You and I cannot exist on this earth. So Allah Azza wa Jal uh, flattened it to a large extent, flattened this earth. It's not to be taken for granted. You know, of course, we can get into so many other aspects of this creation, but just pay attention to his words, mihat. So he says, for what? For you to be able to live on this earth for this temporary probationary period. It's fine-tuned. So this fact that he spread it out like a carpet, we, when do you put carpets? For comfort, for ease of walking. What does it sh show? Loving care of Allah. SubhanAllah. Allah says, I care about you. I, I produce for you an abode that I flattened for you and I put a carpet on it to walk on. Look at how gentle the grass is, right? How easy to walk on this earth. But then he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at again, the loving care theme of Allah. I'm pouring on you from my love and my care for you to be able to exist in this realm that I've readied, that I've readied for you. Then what does he say? I put on the, what Jibal out there, I put on this um, carpet, pegs. So what do you do for a tent or a, 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 a rug right, or a carpet? You, you put things that can stabilize it. So Allah says, mm. and even the mountains that you see, they're the most solid and, 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 and uh, mighty, landmarks on this earth they're actually serving as pegs for this earth to again stabilize it for you because Allah is loving and caring it's pouring down he's manifesting his love and care through these beautifully fine-tuned elements what made the mountain fit with this carpet brothers and sisters it's by design it's a fine-tuned design that shows now the loving care of Allah and the harmony between the carpet and the pegs these are signs these are signs then in this section we can witness. You don't need to prove that there is mountains. You don't need to prove that the flat earth is flat. Well, for some, they still refuse to believe that, right? Or etc. right? They believe that it's not even a globe. Lunatics, right? Who, who cannot, ref you know, who, who refuse all evidence. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that we don't need faith to believe that earth is a globe and it's like a carpet. We don't need evidence. We have, or faith. We witness it. We see it that there are pegs on this earth that stabilize it. But they also reveal something else. They reveal Allah's power. Who fashioned this? Whose power fashioned and designed this with perfect justice between the flatness of the earth and the mountains to fit to, to fit with each other to allow this globe to float the way it does so that we can live on it. Even these mountains are critical to delivering the water to us to the evaporation and the condensation process for the water cycle. Mm, turns out there's other things for those mountains, other functions and utilities. Who fine-tuned that? So Allah says, do you also see beyond my love and care, there's perfect um, justice? So, so justice, what does it mean by the way? It's not just uh, fairness. Justice means to put things together so perfectly. They're just, they have the right proportion, symmetry, and you fit the pieces together. Who fit this together? right on earth with the pegs the mountains and so on and so forth so it shows justice and power so so far we've seen the the theme of loving care 
justice, power. Let's continue going. Now he's going to take us into ourselves. All in brief words. We made you into pairs. You say, oh cool, okay, so Allah's telling me male and female. Wow. What else do we, do we know that Allah said in other parts of the Quran? He said, from everything we created pairs. Or everything we turned into pairs. It's not just male and female. Mm, what else? Look at the look now. Go down to the mini universe in you. On the outside, male and female, husband and wife. But on the inside of you, as a system, there's an atom, atoms, trillions of atoms. You, you and I are made of atoms. When you go into your subsystems, you're going to see proton and electron. Subhanallah, pair. You're going to go into the trees outside of you. You're going to see pairs. They also exist in pairs. You're going to go into the world of the animals and they also exist in pairs. But you say, wait a minute, let me look at other things. If we have the spiritual intellect, you say, wait a minute, night and day, oh, pairs. Subhanallah, sun and moon, like pairs. What else do we see, brothers and sisters? Oh, I sleep, then I woke up to work, pairs. Everything is pairs. And, and we have physical evidence. Science has already established everything for life to exist. For life to be produced, you need pairings, male and a female, generically speaking, to describe everything. But everything else is pairs. Subhanallah, we we and these pairs are not opposites; they complement each other. Male needs female, and female needs male. Night needs day, and day needs night. Life will cease to exist without them. Sun and moon. What does that tell you? If everything is in pairs, Allah says, just utilize your intellect. That means this. You know, this bigger system, so it, we're all subsystems in this bigger system, right? The atom, the plant, the human being, male and female. You see, you're going up, right? Then you see earth. Earth within it is night and day, sun and moon. You go into the solar system, you see other pairs, bigger pairs. Then you go into the Milky Way, bigger pairs. Into the other universes, pairs. Pairs everywhere. But what about the overall system? It's a system. It's the whole universe. It must have a what? Who can tell me? It must have a pairing. Parallel universe. That exists with it. And they're interconnected just as the proton and the electron dance with each other. This is just as male and female are interconnected. No life exists without them. And they're affecting each other. Night and day affecting each other. So this world universe with all the subsystems is already interconnected to another world right now and they're impacting each other we just don't see it and and let's continue allah says look at further signs the further signs about the pairs he says he takes us out of the pairing concept into says oh go look at your sleep we made it a repose for you to rest okay then he says we made the night a covering and we made the day a, a, a means for your provision, for you to work and produce and eat, you know, like and earn your living. What does that tell me? SubhanAllah, but just look at the parallels now. Somebody, you know, when you knit, people love, I, I wish I knew how to knit. Knitting clothes, everything has to be in its place when you knit the fabric. Somebody put that construction, the design of the shirt from the little tiny fabrics. Isn't it true? From the threads. This universe is threaded, brothers and sisters, so meticulously, so symmetric, so harmonious. But check this out. Allah says, you as a separate system, I'm a human being, I work, I get tired, I get sleepy, I get anxious. SubhanAllah, I need sleep. So who designed the night to produce darkness, to give me darkness so that my body can now rest? Who needed it? Who said your body should should it, you know coexist and interconnect with a bigger system called the world that gives you the night to sleep? How? Who needed it together? Only Allah has so much. Because there, if you look at them, they're separate systems. I am not the world. I am not the night and day. But who made the night show up? To now it's after six o'clock so that your body starts to just need to go to bed and and the night allows you to rest and pause from activity. Who needed the night with your body? Allah has Now, how did the night come? Oh, from the sun disappearing. Ooh, who needed the sun so that it can disappear at the right time so there's darkness for your body to rest? 
Allah says, aren't we thinking? The knitting together, the power, the justice behind that, the meticulousness. Then Allah says, oh, by the way, look at this metaphoric meaning. You go to bed at night and you need a cover, blanket. Mm, you feel good under the blanket. It warms you. It, it, by the way, it allows you to sleep better too, right? Um, SubhanAllah, warmth also like, well, okay, let's stop here. There's so other insights, but I'll, I'll stop here. You need a blanket. Look at the bigger meanings. Allah says, we made the whole night a blanket for you. Wow. Libas. So you're covering under a physical blanket, but Allah says, if you were to think, the night itself is covering you like a blanket. You're in the bed. You know, the mihad. All of earth becomes a bed at night. We should be, right? And we all go to sleep. And the bigger blanket enveloping, covering all the creation is actually the night of the sky, subhanAllah. Like a blanket. If if somebody were to think, who plays that blanket? For us to come to literally declaring, everybody should stop, go to, go to bed. Unless somebody needs to be up, right? For a good reason, right? Go to bed. Because you're designed to need to go to rest and the universe is signaling for you, go to bed. But they've shown in science that those who alter their day and night, disrupt their whole system. Their bodies are wrecked. The hormones, chemicals, energy, it's a mess. It messes people up. I used to, like uh, in my, um, in the other universe that I had, and running with my Dawa universe, so I ran a, t a team, We they were like 24-7 team, and operations. SubhanAllah, the night shift, poor thing. We always felt bad for them because their whole day and night is disrupted. And they were working these shifts for years sometimes. And they'll always tell me, like, you know, Tarif, like, it's hard. And it's it's hard to get used to no matter what. Yeah, we kind of adapted to it. But you cannot tell you biologically, physically, familially, it's disruptive. It's horrible. Why? Because it's knitted with the universe. When we alter it, we produce havoc. We transgress the limits of the balance that Allah has established. Who can derive these meanings but someone who reflects? Where is that all that taking me? So Allah again says, look at my love and care for you. I give you this blanket and the time to rest. Then at the morning, he says, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا Oh, we brought a son. The son is already there. Notice. The son is already there. It's not going to like uh, just suddenly uh, start to exist. It's already there. It's earth is rotating and at the right time, miqat, the sun shows up. And when it shows up, suddenly your body is responding. Who, who, who needed that? That your son, that your body now needs to awaken to start working and start activity. And the universe is working with your body to say, now it's day, get up. And you have energy. Oof, who, who needed that and balanced it and put together these elements? To signal for you, the next few hours are for you to produce. Subhanallah. Allah says, are we not again thinking? Now, what other themes emerge from that? Loving care of Allah. The meticulous justice and planning of Allah for you. Yeah, and but also His power. Can someone start, stop the night? Can you? Brother Jamal, can you stop the night? Can't stop the night. Dr. Mia, can you stop the day? Can you stop the sun say, this day, I'm going to shut out the sun. We can't do that. Can you stop even your body from sleeping? We can't. Can you stop yourself from waking up? You can't. You cannot stop any of these functions. Allah says, are you not seeing your powerlessness to stop the flow and the course of this perfect knitted garment of the universe? We have no power over it. We can seek to understand it, but even that is superficial. Allah says, do you see the theme of power? And the theme of timing, timing. So sun appears precisely when it needs to appear, depending on the rotation of the earth. Isn't it true? Seasons, depending on the rotation of the sun, earth around the sun. Now, not the, well, earth rotates around itself, allows the night and day to emerge. They're perfectly knitted. Sun, moon, earth, their whole rotations, Rotation of the earth produces night and day around itself with the location of the sun there. But the rotation, there's another rotation. Earth around sun produces what? Seasons. Mm -hmm. They're perfectly timed. How long does it take for winter to, to appear? A few months. But you know it's going to come. Isn't it true? 
the sun is already there. It's not like waiting to recede from us, you know, someday. No, no, no. It's perfectly timed when it needs to be at a certain distance from Earth for you to produce winter. Everything is timed. We spoke last time about pregnancy. It's timed. Nine months and some days, that's it. That's the normal time. Sleep and rest, normal time. Everything is timed. So what does that tell you? What's the conclusion? So we spoke of loving care, power, justice, and timing. What should all these things inform us? What's the conclusion? And the pairings. If everything is a pair, all these systems are interconnected and they affect each other. And I'm going to tell you one more thing. Your activities during the day affect your night sleep. Isn't it true? Isn't it true? And our decisions as well. And conversely, how we sleep affects our day. If you can't sleep at night, you're going to disrupt your day. Isn't it true? If you have bad dreams, it's going to affect your day. If somebody just wants to live it up, party throughout the night, it's going to definitely destroy their day. But if they got enough good restful sleep, they're going to have a good day. SubhanAllah. Night and day are interconnected. And they're a pair. Allah saying, don't you see from all of this that this universe is paired with another universe like night and day and they affect each other? Interconnected. They're already there. And that day is going to show up, the other world is going to show up like the day shows up. The sun of that day is already there. Like imagine if the whole universe is rotating around that sun, the sun of the next world. It's already there. And we haven't rotated to the point yet enough where the sun of that world appears, but it's going to appear. Just as winter season appears at its right time, summer, just as the morning light appears at its time, miqat, there's a miqat for what? For the day of judgment to come and for you and I to be resurrected. So Allah answers it beautifully by in verse 17. In Naum al Fasli kana miqata. The day of separation is timed. SubhanAllah, I say, well, I, I, again, I have goosebumps saying this. The conclusions are there, brothers and sisters. Just sit back and think of the sun and the next world's sun. It's going to be coming. And it's it's not like going to just uh, appear out of nothing. No, no, no. The sun of the next world, which is not like this sun, is already in its course. And the universe is in its course rotating around it and it's going to just show up and when it shows up that sun the darkness of the night of this world disappears so as if this world that we're in is the night and we're in a state of sleep and we're preparing for the day the real life when you get up so Allah says make sure this sleep time it's not really sleep but in the se- in a sense our lives in this mode prepare well Get, get get some preparation ready because you're going to have to wake up. You cannot avoid it and it's time and the sun is going to appear and you're going to get out of your sleep and you're going to be like, oh my God, it was a dream. It was real. For sure it's real. Allah says, don't you see the parallels again? The harmony, the symmetry? That's the beauty of the surah, brothers and sisters. Section 3 now declares in Naum al Fas, and he declares an, an, a, a, a a, a fact about that day. He says, Inna yawm al verse 17, the day of separation. So just as we've seen Allah's power in this world, and there's nothing we can do to resist that power or change the night and day, the, the, the mountains or the sun and the moon and so on and so forth. He says the same way, you're not going to be able to change anything about Allah's power that day. And one of the manifestations of that power is that Allah will se- separate completely the good from the evil. Fasl. One of the challenges, the, the most trying reality in our world is that good and evil are mixed. Mixed. We have to go through struggle. We have to go through tests. Evil can appear to be truth. People can be fooled, etc. Um, people have to go through like physical torment, emotional, spiritual, psychological. People unleash torment on each other, hurt each other, right? It's mixed. Allah showed us in His signs His loving care, right? He showed us He provides for us. And by the way, another sign that Allah told us about in the previous section is He says, look at the clouds. I should have commented on this. Who brought you the clouds to deliver to you abundant rain and produce plants? 
it's knitted. Subhanallah. The mountains play a part in that. Earth plays, because if the earth, you cannot, it doesn't have good um, soil to plant the seeds and harvest, you cannot produce plants. If water didn't flow and then the sun wasn't there to evaporate the water, and then it reaches the, the peaks of the mountains and it condenses, suddenly the sun is critical to the water, the mountains are critical to producing the water, the soil is critical, and the whole system is knitted together. Allah says, don't you see my loving care? The one who showed us this loving care, why wouldn't he show you loving care in the next world that is paired with this world? So it's a glimpse into his loving care in the next world. If you have water and fruits here, isn't it knitted with another world there in which you'll have water and fruits, but on a bigger scale? Well, there will be the clouds, but not like these clouds. He already showed us the evidence. Things are knitted, and they're going to be knitted in a... The other universe is also knitted to have this amazing, perfect system. Loving care of Allah in infinite abundance. But then there's the power. Allah says, in the next world, out of my loving care for you, I'm not going to mix you up with evil, though. I'm going to completely separate them. There's a boundary between, because this world affects the next world. The night affects the day. When you wake up that day, you're going to notice that, oh, how I slept in this world, quote unquote, how I lived in my sleep mode, affects how I'm going to get up. Are you going to get up in the next world with energy? Are you going to get up in that world with the remembrance of Allah when you get out of your grave? Or are you going to be like, ah, oh, so tired, I need a few more hours of sleep? All depending dependent on how we have lived this world, night and day, subhanAllah. But one of the things you realize when you get up, I don't have to deal with hard things anymore. You did you did well in your sleep here, quote unquote. You're in a state of realization. So when you get up, you're like, Alhamdulillah, there's no work today. <laughs> right? Like there's no stress today. Oh my goodness. Mm, everything smells beautiful. The breakfast is smelling beautiful, and your spouse is smiling at you, and your children are there, and you're like, bright day, temperature is perfect, corona is gone. Stress is gone, anxiety. Can you imagine a day you wake up like that, brothers and sisters? How many of us woke up with anxieties? Are you looking forward to tomorrow, Monday? Yeah, excited, right? You know how we woke up, wake up Monday morning? Ah, oh, ah, oh, work, stress, anxiety, <laughs> labor. Allah says, not affects the day. When you get up, if you've done your part, it's over. It's going to be the brightest sun in, the, in your universe, in your whole life. You're going to be so happy, eternally. Somebody messed up their night's sleep, they didn't actually sleep well. They really transgressed the limits of the night. They're going to get up and they're like, oh my God, the labor has begun. Because the veil has been removed. And they're going to see themselves now separated from the good completely. Day of separation. Nobody can change it, brothers and sisters. Nobody can change that separation of that day of good and evil. Allah says, you will see my power just as you saw my power here and how I provided you the night and day, sun and moon, and you couldn't do anything to change them. Then Allah tells us in that section, what else happens? That this universe, this system has to end. It's temporary. It's impacting the next world, but it has to now mm, vanish. So Allah says, يَوْمَ يُنْفَقُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا وَفُتِحَةِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُيِّرَةِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا All the story, this chapter has to close. So Allah says, on the day when all of you, all of you who are in this sleep are going to come to me in crowds, all of you. And then verse 19, and this, the heavens above you that you've been looking at to teach you lessons, to show you that loving care of Allah, His power, His justice, His the meticulous ability to create and knit things together is going to open up like doors. When do you have doors opening? If you have curtains all around the room, you don't see where the opening is. But suddenly something opens, a door opens. and You look and you're like, oh, there's another room. When he says, imagine this sight. What a beautiful painting. Allah says, the, the heaven you look up above is all going to turn into doors. Open up. Doors. Flapping. Can you imagine the sight? Why is it flapping? Why is it opening? It means there's another universe. But we didn't see the timing of when the door opens. Just as we, you know, again, the sun appears at its time. The doors are going to open at their time. And you realize there is a whole infinite universe behind these doors. I'm going to have to go through the doors. 
But also when doors open, they reveal the secrets behind the door, the mysteries. So Allah says, the doors are going to open. You're going to see the truth of everything I told you behind the doors. And you're going to be blown away. And you're going to have to get through the doors and exit your room. Because the door, the grand doors are pulling you. You cannot. You have no power on that day. And all of you are going to gush through these doors. And as you leave this world, you're going to look at the landmarks in it that you thought were the truth. The pegs, the mountains that held the carpet. Well, the carpet has to now disappear because the world is ending. So the pegs start to be lifted. The mountains start to turn into a mirage before your eyes to vanquish this world because they were timed as well. The sun has to end in its time. The mountains are waiting. They know their lives have to end and they turn into a mirage. You know what a mirage means? It means it's not real. We thought it was real. We thought it's the absolute thing. No, Allah says even these have no power. They turn into powder because the ultimate power is Allah's power. And this world has to end. So it ends in an upheaval, like a revolution, because it's going to be replaced by another world. And by the way, we know that serious societal changes happen through revolutions throughout time. We've seen it. That's interesting. Why do revolutions? Like human beings have discovered this throughout time. They need like serious things to change systems dramatically. And revolutions are can be destructive, can can bring the good, can bring the bad. Regardless, they call it revolution. You have to revolve something. Allah, in the same way, ends this universe through a revolution to show us the seriousness of what happened and to unleash a new reality. So the whole thing breaks down before your eyes to see that it's worth nothing. It vanishes. It has no realness to it. The realness belongs to Allah and to the next world. Section 4. After he described this powerful upheaval that shatters this world and opens the doors of the next world and the sun appears now and we wake up, what's happening? The ones who denied it. The ones who couldn't see the pair. Oh, this world by itself. There's no other pair to it. Our actions here don't impact the next world. Just as someone who's foolish enough to say, how I sleep doesn't affect my work, my day. You know that it affects you. I know that if I didn't sleep enough, I got only two, three hours. I actually physically get sick. Physically, personal, personally, I get sick. Lie, brothers and sisters. You know the effect of it. And if you get a good night's sleep and good dreams, oh, you wake up full of energy and, right? Allah says, are they full? So they thought their lives here didn't affect the next world that is going to appear. So Allah says, what are they going to see? Inna jahannam kanat mirsada ahqaba. لا يذوقون فيها بردا ولا شرابا إلا حميما وغساقا جزاء وثاقا From verse 21 to 26 is section 4. He said, let me describe to you the fate of those who denied the, the existence of that world. What's going to happen to them? In that parallel universe, there's a Jahannam, hellfire. There's a hellfire. The hellfire is exists exist right now, brothers and sisters. But everybody, if you want to think about it, this is my own kind of way of looking at it. It's like they have their mini hellfire. That hellfire, think of it as your day. The night affects the day. What I do during my night affects my energy level during the day, the provision I get during the day, the all the conditions and the circumstances. In the same way, how they live, we live our lives determines what? The temperature of the oven in the next parallel world. We're setting the temperature. The hellfire, I've, I've, I've reiterated this thing before, is nothing but a manifestation of our actions in this world. Those who have unleashed energy of destruction in this world, at the same time, they're producing a fire in the next world for them. Peril. You know, there's something called in, in physics, entanglement theory. This is one of the things that upended my whole world, like in, in, in terms of how I understand things, right? The reality, the, 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 the interconnectedness of everything and the beauty, the mesmerizing beauty of the power of Allah. Entanglement theory says everything is interconnected. So they took atoms, electrons that exist in the same atom, separated them by massive distances. I studied this inside out in physics. I, I, lo I love science and I, I love the interconnections, the spiritual world. Everything is, has parallels. 
they split those atom, they split those electrons that that were like twins, and they noticed that no matter the distance between the the electrons, if they spin one electron a certain way, it'll affect the spin of the other one at the same time without them being in the same space. Everything is interconnected. Our energies are interconnected, just as the sun and the moon and the day and the night are interconnected. It's knitted. So Allah says, why don't you think that your lives here, your actions here are interconnected and knitted with the with the paired electron, your electron in the next world. So what how I, how I spin, I affect my spin in the next world, so to speak, like the electrons. So what I do here, if I chose not to believe in the next world, I've already determined the shape of the next world for me. If I produce destruction, I'm going to produce a fire there. If I produce peace here and I believe in the next world, I will see a correlate peace there. SubhanAllah. Night affects the day. Day affects the night. This world affects the next world. And the next world affects this world. And they're existing at the same time. Allah says, so meanwhile, Jahannam is waiting. Mirsada. It's aware. It's, connect, it's connected to their lives. It realizes what they do. It's being shaped. The intensity of the hellfire, the temperature of the hellfire is actually being shaped by the actions of the human beings. You decide what hellfire. I decide what hellfire we're going to have to go through. Allah says, لِلْطَاغِينَ مَآبَ What's طُغِيَامَ Verse 22. طَاغِي means someone who transgressed the limit. Now pay attention to this. If I transgressed the limits of the night, I didn't use the night to rest. I messed up the night. What happens? That's transgression. It has limits, boundaries. You should honor what the night is for, not to uh, turn the functions upside down. If I did, I've disrupted the night, transgressed the limits of the night, I'm going to destroy my day. If I transgress the limits of the day by excessively working, I'm going to destroy the night. Allah says, Taghin, the ones who transgress the limits of this world are going to create a hellfire for themselves, lie in it, ahqaba, long time, because they transgress the limits of this world. So we need to maintain the balance of the perfect system of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's us who created, brothers and sisters. Tughiyan is when you transgress the limits. Let me give you another example. Atoms. You know what they've discovered? Electrons and protons rotate in their natural places and flow in it. You know what they've discovered? Something called the atomic bomb. If you split the atom, split the atom, right? What's going to happen? It's going to unleash destructive energy. Every single time you disrupt and transgress the limits of something, you unleash destruction. SubhanAllah, I say, what about the moral atom of this world? When we split the atom, transgress the limits, we unleash hell on ourselves here, but also there's going to be a real hell in the next world. They're correlated, just as night and day. And Allah says they're not going to taste in it neither coolness or any refreshing drink. They created these drinks, except something that boils them. Jaza'a wifaqa. It's a fitting, fitting, perfectly knitted recompense. SubhanAllah. We create it. It's a mirror. Night and day. Then Allah in verse 5 tells us something else that happens, returns us back to the day of separation. He spoke of their fate. But then returns us back to the day of separation, the day of judgment, where he says, Allah says, Oh, here's something about their crimes in regards to this day. Section 5. He's going to reveal to us their crimes, their psychology that produced this disrupted day for them. They disrupted their day. They disrupted their next world. Because everything is correlated and interconnected and entangled, just as those electrons. So they said, what was their main problem? Inna hum kanu la yarjuna hisaba. Verse 27. Oh, in their hearts, they were not anticipating that. They, they had no reverence for it. They denied it. They just completely, you know, yani argued with it, with, a, with its existence and rebelled. They don't, they don't, they don't care for it. They, they consider it a, a nothing. So they thought it was nothing, and it's not going to happen. And they did not anticipate hisaba, a correlation 
preparing for their actions. Everything is paired. So whatever we do here has to be paired with something in the next world. It has to be. Remember when we spoke of pairs? It was giving us the clue. But they thought their actions here will not have an outcome there. Because they were limited. They were foolish. It doesn't matter what I do here. There's no accountability. It's going to end when left ends. What's going to kill us is time. They didn't understand the concept of pairing, of, of entanglement. So they had a problem in their hearts. The problem begins right here in the heart, brothers and sisters. Re either reverence, not just awareness, belief in the next world, but reverence for it. Anticipation, in, in, you know, spiritual intellection, intelligence to understand what I do has a pair, good or bad. But then that feeling manifested in their limbs. Because they were rebellious in their hearts and they're transgressing, they're splitting their own atoms, unleashing energy in their limbs. So their tongues now started to manifest the illness in their hearts to lie and lie and lie and use their limbs and their hands and their intelligence to create fire on earth. Disruption, transgression of the limits of this life, hurting others, hurting their society, their communities. Not being humble. Kaddabu. They insisted willfully in their lying and their falsehoods. Not just about occasional lies. Allah emphasizes kaddabu. Their lifestyle was one of falsehood, of evil, criminality, of arrogance. Oh, but they didn't know this. Oh, but everything that they've done is encompassed, is already preserved, and has an effect. It's like law of gravity. It's going to pull you. It produces a copy of itself in the next world automatically. It's like, you know, uh, um, you know the whole idea of surveillance. We don't know that we're being surveilled. I was stunned yesterday. My brother was sharing with me some incredibly scary facts. Like he said, you know, even your, uh, you know, those, uh, uh, it's a subject for another time, but we surveil around the clock. We know this. Even satellites surveil us, copying everything we do in our lives. But they're able to also hear everything in your home. And and one of the mechanisms is even like the, you know, subhanAllah, like uh, th those automatic vacuums, they actually map out the rooms. There's a, something in, in electrical engineering that, that explains this. Somebody can hear you from outside through how this machine maps your home and how the signals of laser can can be modulated through the the objects that this thing creates in its in its in its uh, memory. So how it's scary stuff. We don't know that satellites are looking at us. That the camera on your computer is looking at you. It can be activated. That your phone is literally a machine with you that captures everything. We don't know. We don't know. Allah says there. It's all surveilled. It's all copied. It's all replicated in a bigger system. And your actions are determining that. SubhanAllah. That's crazy, brothers and sisters. It's, it's astonishing. Allah says, that's a fact you didn't know. One day you'll see. فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ الْعَذَابَ So taste. Look at what he says. Taste. Taste it. In the next world. Because we're not going to increase you anything but torment. Why, why does he say increase? It's proportional to their increasing progressive... Um, uh, uh, deterioration. So on earth, you notice fire keeps increasing as you fuel it. So these criminals kept, you know, insisted on evil, but with time they kept increasing that evil. Why? They kept deteriorating. Morally, we start to degenerate more and more. That's why you have to be careful and constantly cleanse ourselves. It's not about making mistakes, brothers and sisters. It's not about sinning. It's about not cleansing from the sins. So they were in a state of progressive deterioration of their souls morally and ethically and spiritually. So remember, everything affects each other. Similarly, in the next world, the fire kept increasing based upon their excessive sinning, criminality, and deterioration. They're tasting the outcome of what they've done. That's it. Just as someone in paradise tastes the outcome, the fruits mm, of their patience, of their peace, of their kindness, of their compassion. So Allah now takes us to the next the, the other pair, side of the pair, for those who've struggled and did well and had reverence in their hearts and they believed in the next world. Because remember, your thoughts and beliefs have an effect. They're shaping the next world. Allah, well, I know the most astounding insights that I've come across from a scholar is, is when he said, um, 
you're producing, you're creating your own world in your heart. You're, the next world, you're creating it in your heart. Be careful and pay attention to your thoughts and your beliefs about it. You're literally right now constructing in your state of being what that next world looks look like for you. Of course, through the actions, but it begins in the imagination of your heart, in your intentions. What do you want? You create. You can create palaces in Jannah right now. We and I can produce a hellfire right now for ourselves. So Allah says, let me tell you about them. Section 6. Fate of the reverent, whose hearts were humble, conscious of Allah, and believed in that world and worked towards it, and they didn't transgress the limits of this world. So they're not going to disrupt their day, so to speak. They slept well. And they lived, slept in peace, lived in peace, respected the boundaries. Naturally, the next world that is connected to it is going to be producing the, the harvest for them. So he says, Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. Inshallah, five minutes and we'll wrap. Final section. Actually, two more sections. Sorry. Or, or yeah. I'll follow what I'm, you know. Follow along, inshallah. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ حَدَائِقَ وَأَعْنَابَ وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ وَكَأْسًا دِفَاقًا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوًا وَلَا كِذَّابًا جَزَاءً مِنْ رَبِّكَ عَطَاءً حِسَابًا Allah says, as for verse 31 through 35. Almost done. As for المتقين. What's taqwa? God consciousness. Reverence in the heart. That's where he begins, with the heart. They respected what Allah said. They revered the concept of a next world, looked forward to it, anticipated it, saw the connection of this element with the next element. They're paired. They're saying, we're headed there. We're shaping that next world by our hearts and actions. What did they get? Mafaza. What's Mafaza? Mafaza is the supreme grand achievement. It doesn't matter what success you and I define to be. No, it, it's irrelevant. It's what Allah defines to be an achievement. He says the mafaz, the greatest achievement, is those who had reverence for Allah and reverence for the next world. Because this world is temporary. It vanishes and then the next world, it, it's, eternal. it's eternal. But it's shaped by this world. Mafaza. See, so Allah tells us, what does that mafaza look like? What is that achievement? Four verses through which he illustrates with the beautiful, beautiful illustrations the beauty and the bliss of that world, how it fulfills you. I want to ask you, take a st sit, step back, picture that beautiful, blissful day today. How does it look like? Richard is drinking. What are you drinking, Richard? Coffee? Tea? Oh, I know you're muted. Coffee. 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 I'm drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. I, picture, I don't know what, Richard, what you think of your blissful day is, but I can tell you, we, you can imagine, right? Can you share me, if you tell me like two, three things, mm, perfect day. What would it be like? Average though, then, you know, not the peculiar, what would that be? Warm sun, blue sky, perfect coffee. Perfect coffee. What about company? Love, the ones I love, in the best of health, perfect, happy. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You just, you just recited for us in your own way four verses. Right? Here's what Allah says. They're dwelling in fruit gardens and particularly have in them lush grapes. Do you, know, you notice, by the way, whenever we have images in, uh, in books or in movies about people chilling in gardens, it's always the grape. Mm, the grape, like somebody feeding the grape. Like, uh, me, <laughs> Rial is not here, but me and him always joke and sometimes take pictures of us giving each other grapes, <laughs> right? Just just mess around. Because it's like the picture of bliss and comfort and savoring the grape. Two words. Allah says, you, they're going to be dwelling in these eternal gardens of fruits and they're going to have lush grapes. But is that enough? Richard, you said it. Check this out. وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ Perfect companions and spouses. All the same age. Well, oh, my spouse is there. My company is there. That I love and they love me. Mm, but they can also be like moody. Right? Or I can be... Okay, before we get into the moodiness, 
you're eating mm, lush lush uh, grapes and they're hovering over you and your spouse is there and your family is there and your friends are there mm, you're chilling reclining in these beautiful lush shady gardens what else do you need richard i need a drink a drink filled a cup filled to the brim for you measured he didn't see what's in it other verses say refreshing cooling drink hot drinks ginger camphor Mm. Allah says, let them compete in that. It has a smell of musk. You can imagine, never ends, right? As much as you want. But then, what happens when people gather? They're drinking, they're eating, they're chilling out in a garden. Suddenly, what they what do they start talking about? Mmm, like spoiling things, right? Ah, a word pops here that spoils your mood. Somebody remembers, I don't know what. Ah, I have a something tomorrow to do. Rain starts to <laughs> pour on you. Somebody also can hurt you with a word or a feeling or something they're hiding in their hearts towards you. Or we start talking just whatever. Things that are, that are as I said, offensive or derogatory or get into things we don't understand and they start messing with each other's moods, right? Can that spoil you? Of course it can spoil the scene. So here's what Allah says. Mm. Verse 35, he negates all of that. Don't worry. Within that company, that lush garden of grapes and drinks, they're not going to hear anything that is a lie, nor anything that is insincere. No vain talk. It's all beautiful, blissful, peaceful talk that gives you, delivers to you perfect peace. Nothing spoils your mood. Your own thoughts cannot spoil you. Could there be a better picture? that summarizes, captures the perfect fulfillment of desire, of bliss, of achievement, than these four verses, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah says enough. You create that garden. That's what's scary. It's like, whew. you and I are creating the garden. They're entangled. Our world, the night affects the day. Right now, we're planting that garden, or not. We're planting that peace, that spouse, Subhanallah. How many grapes? How many how many thrones you sit on? Who your company is? Right now. Decisions on company right now determine my company there. That's incredible. Then Allah Azza Jal says, it's a reward from Allah that is so ample and bountiful for them. They deserve it, but I'm the generous. Allah and he said, Oh, you haven't seen the generosity and the love and care of Allah. Then Allah ends the surah with this. Shallow will end quickly bit So he wants to now wrap up the surah by reminding us of who has the power. He says, you already seen the power. You couldn't do anything about it. Remember, in the signs of Allah in nature, we couldn't change his power. He says, don't you think I'm going to have power on that day of separation? And you're not going to be able to do anything that day? Right? The evidence is here. Point us to the realities there. You've seen Allah's loving care here. You're going to see a Jannah there in which he pours his loving care. You're going to see torment here. You're going to see torment there. Justice here, you're going to see justice there, but on a grand scale. But then the power of Allah is illustrated in verse 37. He says, this reward given to the reverend is from Rabbi samawati wal ardi wa ma baynahum ar-Rahman la yamlikuna minhu khitaba. Verse 37. You know what's coming from who this reward? From the nurturer and the master of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. But you don't even see ar-Rahman, the compassionate. Oof. That's the one who's going to bless you and reward you with his loving care because you revered him. But this Rahman juxtaposed with his power. They on that they cannot say a word. They ran their mouths here with evil, with lying and falsehoods. That day, nobody can say a word. Their mouths are going to be sealed. They can't do anything about the power of Allah. He has full ownership of that world. On the day when the angels rise and Jibreel rises, none of them can even intercede or say a word except with Ar Rahman, the compassionate. He keeps saying Ar Rahman. He's powerful, but he's Rahman. Except the ones who speak well and righteously. That's not a day where evil can exist. So even those who want to plead for others, they have to say it by permission. Even the prophets speak by permission. Day of absolute power of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the day of truth. That's it. All the 
veils are removed, gone. You see now the other pair, side of the pair element, the next world, and it shows up and there's nothing hiding it. The sun has appeared and it's a new day. Whoever wants, wants. Sha'a, you want, I want. What do you want? Allah says. If you want, then take a path to Allah. From now, cross this bridge of this world into the next world to be with Allah, to seek Allah, to repent to Allah, to return to Allah now, not there. You cannot return there. You have to return here. Then he wraps up the surah by saying, Inna andarnakum adaban qariba. He says, we've warned you about an impending near torment. Near. When? He says, I'm warning about a near torment. Oh, first of all, there's torment in this world. It's near. We don't know. Coronavirus is like torment. We didn't know it was coming. Allah gives us a taste of near torment in this world. But there's the torment of death. You don't know when. I don't know when. We're going to die. That's the next experience of torment. Although for the believer, it's comfort. But it's it's hard. It's tragic. It's difficult. But what about the ultimate torment, the day of judgment? And it's near. All of them are near. We just don't know when. And they're successive. They're coming at you. They're coming at me. Prepare. And they're connected to this world. He says, Here's what that gets going to happen. He said, on the day when the human being will look, the one who transgressed the limits. No, everybody, sorry. All human beings will look at what they've offered. Oh, I've done this. I've created this world with my own hands. I just didn't see the connection. Everything is preserved, replicated, meticulously preserved. And then he says, and the kafir who denied it, who pretended it doesn't exist, who said it was nothing, there's no next world, what will he say? Ya laytani kuntu turaba. I wish I was dust. Why? He didn't make a place for the next world in his life. Pay attention. He created the world in his heart where that world doesn't exist. It's nothing. It's a joke. It's nothing. So since it's nothing, when they appear in it, they're going to be nothing. Subhanallah. They have no place. Because you denied it in your heart. So you have no place in it. And you're going to be wish you can be dust. Because you don't fit in it. You produce the hell of that day for yourself. So you're going to be wish you can be dust. Except that the kafir cannot turn into dust. They're going to have to now taste the outcome of the fire that they created on this earth by splitting their moral spiritual atom. Unleashing hell on themselves. Subhanallah. It's all perfect. It's all just. It's knitted. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, I stop here and uh, open the floor for questions or comments. Thank you very much. God bless you for this beautiful commentary. I think here, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is just like a, a loving, caring parent to us. As a caring parent entices the child to a good thing by promising something, showing him a chocolate, showing him this thing. Likewise, here God tells us, if you do this, I'll give you this thing. If you do this thing, He just uh, loves us like a pay, loving parent. So he does not want us to go astray. He wants us to come to the good thing, to enjoy the good thing, to enjoy good things of this life and the next. This is what I understand. It's just all this. So, so you're, you're talking about His loving care through the pairings, uh, Brother uh, Dr. Mir? Yeah. It is just like a loving parent care for the child who, uh, I mean, he may, the child may not listen to, uh, to the parent, though it is a good thing to do this thing. Yes. Somebody, he may tell them that if you uh, do this thing, I'll give you chocolate. If you write a page, I'll give you $10. Likewise, God here loves us. He loves his creation just like a loving parent and yes. showing him good things and bad things, telling him if you do this thing, you have this thing, you have this thing, this thing. So it is just like a loving parent, God manifests us just like a loving parent. Right, just like that to me. And indeed, the idea of pairs, what a, what a manifestation of his bounty, of his, of his love for us, brothers and sisters. It's not just a, a means for existence, for producing, initiating existence. Allah brought you your dad and mom. They're a pair. And they, they coalesced through a merging of fluids to produce you. Wow, what a way to produce us. 
And it's all gentleness through the womb. Another pair. You're paired with the womb. Gentle care covering you, providing for you, then to deliver you into a world that is paired. And you're going to be paired with somebody else to experience love. Where do we experience love and affection? Why did Allah give us spouses? The purpose, by the way, إِلَيْهَا To find repose, loving care of Allah. You need it. I need, it's a core need. It's a yearning. We can't function without it. So he said, let me show you my love and care. I'm going to produce for you someone, a mother to care for you, and a spouse, if they're good, they're going to give you that. And then children to deliver to you that joy and happiness. It doesn't mean there are no challenges. And you're going to also yourself become part of a pair to experience that love and affection and to dispense it and feel it. It's all about the love you feel from your mom, from your spouse, from your child, from whoever. It's actually a manifestation of Allah's care himself and love. And we haven't seen the love of Allah, al-wadud. So imagine the pairs he's going to give you there, the next world. How will your spouse be? How will your child be? How will your friend be? Can you imagine? Allah says, um, Allah says in Surah Maryam, those who believe, revere Allah and have done good deeds, Allah shall deliver to them Wudda, his love. And it's manifest with these pairs, right? Because he, and by the way, why is it pairs? Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. The only Ahad is Allah. Everything has to be in pairs. Mm-hmm. If we really uh, study everything in existence, and I'm pretty sure the next world the same way, everything has to be in pairs. The only single Ahadun Ahad is Allah who initiated all the pairs. And he himself cannot be paired. That's what the problem with the idolater, the, the, the ones who did shirk with Allah did. They created pairs for Allah. Allah says, don't attribute human things to me. These are dependencies on me. Uh, there can be only one source. You cannot have two sources anyway. Because if you have two sources, that means something initiated them. So it has to be going back to the one. Ahadun Ahad, the beauty of our Islam is the emphasis on absolute strict oneness of Allah. When I speak with people, brothers, sisters, young Muslims, teenagers, young people, you know, and helping them understand and, 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 and appreciate the beauty of our faith, I speak of this oneness and, and its implications and how it can be derived from our world. I don't just say, oh, say la ilaha illallah, that's it, accept. Let's go through a journey of life and see how it's an inevitability. Inevitable. If you open your heart and your mind to it, you're going to see it. It has to be there. Right? The only logical conclusion. Wallahi, when that reality sets in their hearts by observing the signs, nothing will shake it. Nothing can shake it. But it's if it's imposed on them, mm, they'll get rid of it in no time because they don't have the tools to know how to think. That's why I love to take even you know, students, young people through these surahs. They're not just surahs about all believe in the hereafter. They're actually an exercise for their intellects, rational and spiritual intellects to know how to connect their world to the inevitable conclusions of the next world. These are all tools, by the way. These are this is a subhanAllah, a training manual for our minds and hearts. Zakmullah khair. So I'm just seeing also Brother Jamal. Um, I'm gonna read this comment from Brother Jamal, inshallah. So Brother Jamal shares with us this thought. It's this sort of reminds me about the abundance of Allah's favors, evidence around us, of his presence, and the purpose. I love this purpose for which he created the universe. Allah has made the universe and provided for us all we need to make worship for Him easy. It's a beautiful. You also emphasize purpose. It has to be a correlate. It's like, makes sense, right? Everything has utility, function, and purpose. Who made that? There has to be a purpose for the overall system, the whole bigger world that we don't see. Right? And then how He furnished everything to facilitate not just life, but the worship of Allah. Well, even the flattening of the earth is actually you can make sujood. Imagine if it was all like ruggedy. You can't walk, you can't even put your head on it. Isn't that amazing? Facilitated it completely for his worship to be easy. But the code is easy. Everything is easy with Allah. Jazakallah khair, brother Jamal, for sharing that. Alhamdulillah. Um, oh, and, may, may I? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's, let's inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. We'll, all, we'll take everybody's inshallah. Uh, brother Sadruddin, go ahead. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Um, for a true believer, 
who works at night, Allah made night to sleep. Would that be going against Allah's will if you work have oh, a job at night time? Again? I said for a true believer, Allah made the night to sleep. To sleep. If you have a job at night time, working at night, I said, does that affect? Does that is that going against Allah's will? Okay, so is that joke? It's haram. <laughs> just kidding. Uh -huh. Of course not. I'm, I'm just, I was just wanted to throw a joke. It was irresistible to say it's haram to work at night. No, it isn't. These are circumstances beyond somebody's uh, ability. What about even military? What are they going to do? Go to bed at night too? <laughs> They're going to have to be up to protect the borders, right? Good question, Brother Sadruddin. Allah's talking about normal lives, the average lives, right? He created the night perfectly knitted for your body to rest. And by the way, they've studied this in physiology. My wife always talks to me about this. If she's, if there's an advice she's giving me, uh, you know, for my health, I have some health, had some health challenges, like study of sleep, sleep, right? Sleep, it, it restores you, balances you out. They've studied the hormones and the chemicals. It's incredible what happens and they're timed. Even the release of uh, serotonin, to allow to sleep, it's released at a certain time. Do you know that light disrupts the production of serotonin in you? That's a, who did that? Perfectly balanced at a certain hour, it, the body starts, serotonin is released and you start to go to, start to rest, right? Then we go break it by whatever. Human beings do all kinds of crazy things at night. That's what Allah's talking about. Somebody has to work for their survival. They have no other option. That's what they need to do. Allah will help them. That's their struggle. That's their test. Just as somebody's tested with an illness, with difficult life circumstances, they have no control over it. Allah does not burden beyond somebody's capacity. No, no, and that's, of course, it's all perfect, not only okay, may Allah aid them in their struggle and reward them for their patience, the sacrifices they have to do, because their physiological system is upended. And you know why Allah does this too? To show us the consequences. Isn't it true? We experience it, you feel it. But again, can somebody think who made the day and the night to be like that? And for the circadian rhythm to match with it. And it's perfectly timed. And somebody doesn't have purpose behind this. And another world. SubhanAllah. Again, the sun of that day will show up one day. We're rotating, getting closer and getting closer. We're going to wake up from our sleep here. And I want you to see this connection. This life is like represented by this sleep, night. And it's timed. The sun is going to appear and you're going to wake up. How we wake up is shaped by how we live in this sleep. Just as night and day affect each other. That's one of the, like, it's really like sitting with me from this surah. I'm like, wow. That is, is it's a powerful revelation from Allah Azza wa So, Inshallah, yeah. share whatever, uh, if you have questions or comments, inshallah, keep them flowing, inshallah. Well, I wanted to, um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, Prince. Oh. Um, first of all, Tarif, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, please. <laughs> okay, first of all, Brother Tarif, thank you, thank you, thank you. This, uh, These are always wonderful classes, but this one felt like it was custom design for Richard. This was just like straight to my heart. Even the last comment about sleep, because right now I'm on some medication that mm. only lets me sleep three, four hours a night, and I'm trying to see the guidance in it. Certainly night prayers are much easier now than typical, you know, because I'm up at 3.30 or 4 or whatever. But, <laughs> um, but I love physics like you do. And, you know, I love this entanglement theory. And I was thinking while you were talking that, um, you know, the, the scientists, they, in slang, they call that spooky action. I don't Ooh, know if you know that. Action, yes. Spooky yes. action. Because That's any that evidence that of right? the uns yeah, because any evidence of the unseen mind, of the unseen world to a certain kind of mind is spooky, right? It's like Halloween. The mm. unseen is not something beautiful. It's something... Uh, you know, like like a costume or so. I, I thought that was interesting. But the sleep thing, you know, I was also thinking about how, uh, you know, there are history books that show just in the last two, three hundred years, we started living at night, 
before that we didn't, right? We didn't have gas lamps or electricity. So we were much more in tune with the natural order, I think, based on what you're saying. And to me, that's the value of Salat because you know we're calibrating, recalibrating to the solar system, at least, right? Because you know, when the sun is about to come up, but you know, when it's highest point and so on. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe there's something there. And then I guess I would end with, um, you know, you were talking a lot about these polarities, and, you know, uh, the sun and the moon. I was thinking, you know, magnetic fields, you know, repel at one end, uh, attract at the other, heaven and hell. And I was just thinking, and you, you said it yourself, but, uh, you know, everything, these opposites, like the two ends of the magnetic field, reflect the one that is the field right and mm -hmm. day and night reflect the one that is the solar system with us in it so i was you know the warp and the woof woof of a whatever they call it of a weaving you know reflects a weaver so it seems to me what what a lot of people miss is that this universe is polarity so that must be evidence of the one you know of the one of uh you know it should be like a song of Tawheed, it seems to me, you know, that it uh, it should reinforce that. But um, that's, those are just my thoughts. I thought I'd really- uh, Again, a well blessing for the outpouring. <laughs> I, I really need a sitting with you, Brother Richard. I just want to tell you, so let's connect. Anytime. It's, no, I really mean it. Like there's a, uh, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you always for everybody's insights and your insights are beautiful there from the heart from the mind i don't want to begin with and like subhanallah like the salah like that's one thing that really really stood out it's like calibration we only understood the powerful calibration of the salah to restore you to work with the natural order because what we've done ego separated us from the natural order we want to sub make the world subservient to us instead of harmoniously working and learning and fitting when we fit with the just world of Allah it's like a garment and one thread wants to get out what, what, why did I tell you about the atomic bombs when you start splitting it unleashes hell all it takes is one thread and we want to pull it because we think ego I don't need the, the I don't need the fabric so when you split the atom, it unleashes powerful energy that can destroy Earth. When you split our atom that fits into the substance of the body of this world, because it all fits together, it's perfectly knitted, right? Then we're going to unleash ener negative energy on ourselves and everything else. Salah so restores you back, as Brother Richard says, to this natural order to fit with it. But it's not just a physical exercise. It's a spiritual, harmonious presence with it of peace of consciousness that the sun here the sun is speaking to you get up like you're working with the sun with the day with your energy level even the number of rakahs even whether you uh verbalize a salah or not verbalize a salah like everything and you're needing the physical dimension with a spiritual dimension of reflecting upon the source of it ahadun ahad it's it's like it's a dancing symphony of perfection for the one who opens his heart and is not trampled by their ego that blinds that's really what it comes down to just like a look at brother i don't know I, I, as i said there's so much on the pairings that you've said on tawheed on the polarities and the field it's all it presents itself you said it last time i think you said we we're being pushed to the limits of our intellects to draw conclusions about the parallel right invisible truths but they're there they have it they have to be Makes no sense if it didn't. Then everything in our world has to start breaking down. Right? If there's no polarity to this world, so to speak. Zakallah again from the heart. May Allah bless and reward you. Okay. Um, interesting observation. Okay. Ayawan Jamal again asks a question and the last ayah answers the question of Ayawan. Absolutely, dear brother Jamal. Jazakallah khair. Beautiful insight. It's answered throughout the surah, but the stamp is in the last verse. Right? SubhanAllah. You see how Allah, the Allah's style pattern of 
discourse methodology. He posed a question at the beginning. He didn't just say, oh, it's a day of judgment. He took us through a journey of putting us through his, uh, the panorama of his creation, the natural order within you, outside of you, to draw the conclusions and the parallels and the interconnections. Then took us into the day of judgment itself and showed us the fate of people and what's going to happen. And then says, oh, it's a day of separation. And then at the end, last verse, verse 40, he says that near torment that you've created for yourself, which is part of that day, is coming it's like the answer to the question, because they said, where is it? When is it? He says, it's coming. And you shall see it. So it's it's a it's complete um, uh, uh, um, wrapping of the story at the end. It like, comes back full circle. And within the surah is the journey itself. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Tarif. This is Sami Budriga. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, well, first, I'd like to thank Nabi Brother Nabil for uh, giving me the opportunity to attend these sessions. I, uh, I really find them very, very helpful. Uh, wonderful group. Uh, just two comments. <clears throat> My throat is not treating me well today. Um, I really enjoy the concept of the, the parody. Think about life and then afterlife as being also a pair. Mm -hmm do in this life will affect, uh, you know, afterlife. The fact um, that you put a lot of attention on, on, on day and night, what you do during the day impacts what you do during the night and what you do at night, in fact, impacts what you do during the day. I think it's a great point because it's a daily reminder. Mm. Oh. When you think about your life and what you do, you think about your journey, your entire, you know, stay in this life. But when you think about it, about day and night, it's, it's, it's really a, a recurring reminder that, you know, you think about it every day. I mean, there are other things that remind you about it, but the, the day, the pairing between the day and night and comparing that between this life and what's, what comes after life, I think is a great, a great point so I, I really enjoyed it i never thought about it that way but it's physical you feel it as you said you know like you know you, you don't sleep very well you feel tired the next day which means you suffer the next day mm. Um, mm. so i i really enjoyed that that point second comment you talked about the harmony of the universe and the miqat and and the importance of time um this one point i like to add which is really precision and perfection yeah. Uh, uh, has uh, used to create this universe. If we think about just the Earth and the Sun, if, if, if the Sun was a little bit closer to Earth, Earth will burn. And if it's, you know, a little bit further away, it would be freezing Earth. So it's, you know, again, the, um, the uh, it, it, there is a perfection in, in, in this entire harmony. So the harmony is not only the in timing when things happen, but how far these things are from each other. Mm. The global universe impacts us uh, uh, tremendously. Uh, so just one, one comment that I just wanted to add. And again, thank you for uh, uh, these enlightening sessions and this wonderful group. Uh, uh, so I'm very glad to, uh, to be uh, mm. and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be uh, joining you uh, every week, inshallah. Well. I don't know where to begin again. Brother Sammy, we're blessed to have you. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah enlighten you. Uh, and may, may Allah reward Brother Nabil for inviting you and, and, and allowing us to benefit from your presence and your spirit and your energy and your sincere um, contributions, right? We're blessed to have you. You're a piece of that puzzle for us, right? Now, you're, you're, you're knitted with us. We didn't, we don't recognize how we're knitted together. So, Thankful to you, grateful to me. Allah really, Wallahi, I ask Allah to enlighten you and your family. And enlighten Brother Nabil for also, as I said, the, being part of that journey, bringing you with us. And Jazakallah khair for the beautiful insight. Because no matter what we say, Brother Sami, everybody's insight, sincere, open insight, is part of the knitted fabric that allows, like I'm seeing things when you spoke. Like I'm like, whoa, I didn't, 
think in that way about night and day, it's really so real. It's so like relevant to our existence. It's a story we live every day. So it speaks to us more powerfully. I didn't think about it that day, right? About that way. So Jazakallah khair for highlighting this, this aspect. And that's your angle on it that you, Allah has opened your heart to see, enlightened you to see with His nur, right? So Jazakallah khair for really sharing this beautiful point about the night and day and the potence and the relevance and the power of it. It speaks to us every day and we're living it every day. SubhanAllah, this is just, yeah, it's going to sit with me. Jazakallah khair for sharing that and the other thoughts as well. Look forward to having you again, uh, Brother Sam, inshallah. Um, and we make dua for your family, make dua for all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah fiqh, akhi. Um, Brother Nasser also shared, as always, he enthralls us with these uh, timely uh, verses from the Qur'an. I always look, and Brother Nasser is just, again, showering us with these verses from the Qur'an that fit into what we're talking about from Surah Tawbah, Al-An'am, where Allah says, um, you know, work, your work shall be seen. It's beautiful, like, it's a longer verse. It's seen, it's like replicated, it's going to be seen, you're... It's not going to end in this world. It has an it, but every deed has an eternal life, replicated across the universes into the ultimate universe of the next world. It's it's like just as we copy things here on this earth, just as we are being surveilled and our actions are preserved, right? Uh, same idea. So they have a parallel outcome, natural outcome for them, and we're going to be seen, and Allah will see. Allah already knows them. Rasulullah sallam shall see them, the ummah shall see it, and we're going to return back to Allah. So beautifully, like, fitting, uh, again, uh, verse. Jazakumullah khair, brother, and Nasser for this. Yes. Jazakumullah khair, akhi, jamal. Inshallah, we'll do. Um, so, before, actually, I don't want to forget this. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Further reminder, Jamal. And, and brother, um, Sadruddin's mom passed away. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think most of us are aware of this. Um, Sister Haja uh, Qaija Bangura. Uh, she just a few days ago, brother, she said she passed away. And brother Sadruddin is, just, subhanAllah, graciously still with us. Despite his separation from the, the most amazing gift in his life, his own mother. So the least we can do is offer our brother, think about him and, and share his moment of pain and, and make dua for them. We ask Allah Azza wa to have mercy on our brother Sadruddin's mother, Sister Haja. We ask Allah to enfold her in, her, in his mercy, uh, to join her with Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to uh, allow her to experience nothing but eternal bliss and eternal comfort upon her departure from this earth. We ask Allah to raise her among the righteous, to raise her among the truthful, to make, raise her among those who testify that La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. We ask Allah that He makes everything good that she's done on this earth bear testimony of her beautiful, uh, 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 faithful presence on this earth. We ask Allah to, that He raises her to the highest of ranks and grants her the sight of His face and joins her with Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and with, with Sadruddin and her children reclining on thrones in fruit gardens with grapes and drinks up to the brim and where there's no vain talk, eternally, eternally, eternally. As Allah to grant Sadruddin patience and strength and his whole family and everybody else who has lost anyone dear to them. Allahumma amin, Allahumma amin. Barakallah fikum. Brother Sadruddin, we're thinking about you, Akhi. You're, you're in our hearts. You're very dear to us. Allah knows. And we're here for you if you need anything. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, anything else, brothers and sisters? It's uh, good to see everyone. I really mean it. Uh, so, you know, inshallah, it's again the beginning of the 30th just. We're going to do um, next surah, Surah Al-Nazi'at. It's like you'll see also the parallels between the surahs, inshallah, next time. Uh, next time, bi Um So, I don't have anything else. If you have any final comments or questions, please go ahead. It can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about this surah. But I'm going to give you a chance, inshallah. Brother, I have a, I have yeah, a, try, go ahead. Uh, and just to uh, tell you that uh, so thanks a lot for explaining the entire surah for us. It's really, really, very thankful we are, we are actually to you. Jazakallah khair, Brother Shahid. Like, if I know it's from your heart. You're very dear to us. Jazakallah khair. And 
May Allah bless you and your family. And I, and I honestly say that whatever we learn is from Allah. He's the teacher. And he facilitated for his servants to come together for his remem remembrance. And he, he can pour on us from his beautiful uh, light lights, nur, anwar. The nurs of understanding, the lights of understanding, right? And your presence, everybody's presence is part of that knitted garment, right? Don't think it just comes. It's not my intellect, your intellect, it's Allah's creation. When we open hearts, things happen. When we open our hearts and turn to Allah for His pleasure, extraordinary things happen. As you walk, I just want to conclude with this. Think of your life this night. How your how your sleep mode is. Not you know when I see speak sleep here, and I'm not talking not talking about not working. I'm talking about the, this face. Everything you do is mapped to the next world. You're producing. The sun is going to appear for sure. We're going to get out of the womb of this earth. Get up, and what we're going to witness is an outcome of how we slept. So get some rest. But the rest here is striving for Allah, right? and being conscious of Allah, trying our best, and seeking His forgiveness and His repentance, and loving Allah and creating Jannah in our hearts, desiring Jannah, desiring to be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, desiring Allah's pleasure, and humbling ourselves. Wallahi, I mean it, humbling ourselves, because it's the ego that blinds a human being. And, and, and go back to your families, brothers and sisters, and spread the light of Allah. Light, light upon nur, nurun ala nur. Nurun ala, I spoke about it last Jum'ah. If that light of awareness is in the heart, it shows up on the limbs. What has your family, family, community seen? What lights have they seen on you that allows them to see the sun of the presence of Allah and his, that world? You know, it, we're there. We, our presence affects everything. We're entangled, interconnected. So just keep that in mind. Speak, think of your own nur. Where is it? What's the extent of it? Right? Let me see if there's any final comments and then we'll wrap, inshallah. I have one final comment, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> um, when you were reading the ayahs um, about uh, what the, you know, the believers, mashallah, will get in Jannah, I think the, the one that stood out to me the most was um, لا يسمع فيها لا ولا كذابة. Um, I think that you know, right now with speech is just being used um, a lot in such a hateful way. Um, whether you turn on the news or you see on social media, people are just um, spouting out opinion like it's fact, um, using horrible words um, with each other. You see it in the, in the political realm um, you see it a lot in, you know, people that have mental health challenges with depression, you know, your, your own internal speech can be very harsh and, and damaging. And we know that, you know, shaitan's waswasa um, is there. So um, I feel like just that was the most tantalizing thing. I mean, the, the drink sounds amazing too, but just that, that no more of that mm. vile hate speech is just going to be cut off. I mean, what a relief that will be. <laughs> Jazakallah, I beautifully said, Wallahi, I, I don't know what else to say. Mashallah, you said it best, how we're so absolutist in how we render our opinions and argumentation, and it's noisy, and it takes a toll on the heart. That's why I actually say to my brothers and sisters, don't just pay attention to, to what you hear and what you say, but also like social media is another realm where we're being consuming, even by looking all that. And it's wrecking the state of peace in our hearts and souls. All egos, even if it's shrouded, just keep in mind, in religious language. It, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Wallahi. Even it can be enfolded in religious language, but it doesn't mean it's peaceful or it's sincere. Right? Point is, you said it best. There's a point at which time point which Allah will end all the spoilage the noise is gone he says everything in their hearts that is of rancor bitterness ego is going to be extracted out once and for all no no noise eternally peace 
Nothing can spoil it. Not even your thoughts can spoil it. That's an amazing. That's Jannah for me. You said it. Wallahi, Sister Jatu. Jannah is for, for us to not experience that pain, that torment, that noise. Regardless of the drinks and the food and the company, you're right. Just to be in peace. That's why it's called Darul Salam, House of Peace. Wallahu yadu ila Dar es Salam. Just enough. That's peace. Eternal. Absolute. Guaranteed. Zakallah khair on ending us on that note. May Allah bless all of you. So inshallah, let's wrap. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya Allah, you are the most compassionate. You are the most merciful. You are the source of all of life, all power, all justice, all beauty, all goodness. We ask you, Allah, beseech you to, to send your prayers upon Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his spouses and children and family and all those who follow in his footsteps. Grant him, Ya Allah, thousand, thousand salahs, Ya Allah. Grant him, Ya Allah, thousand, thousands blessings, Ya Allah. Beyond what we can count, beyond what we can say, Ya Allah, we can never, ever appreciate his His beauty and his goodness and his uh, mercy and, and, and him being the ultimate gift, your gift to all of us, Ya Allah. We cannot appreciate the Quran as the ultimate of the gifts of Allah, Ya Allah. We ask Allah that, to enlighten us. You're the nur. And the nur samawati wal You're the light of the heavens and the earth. Take us out of our darkness, Ya Allah. The darkness of our egos, arrogance, the darkness of our ingratitude, our problems, our afflictions, anxieties, distress. Grant us light, Ya Allah, in our hearts and our minds from around us, from above us, from below us, from in front of us, from behind us, from our right and left. Immerse us in your light, Ya Allah, in, in understanding and comprehension and guidance. And make us vessels of light, Ya Allah, for everybody around us. Have mercy on our parents. Have mercy on, on those who have passed away. Have mercy on the dear mother of our dear brother, Sadruddin, Ya Allah. Have mercy on everybody that is present now. Fulfill our deepest yearnings, Ya Allah. Don't make us miss our mark, Ya Allah. Grant us your remembrance. Grant us the anwar, the nurs of the Qur'an, the light of the Qur'an. Grant us the fulfillment of your promise in Surah Al-Naba for Jannahs, Ya Allah, under your shade where we're dwelling with our families and drinking cups to the brim, where we're dwelling in gardens where there's no noise, Ya Allah, with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, don't deprive us of this, Ya Allah. Make us, Ya Allah, live well in a manner that pleases you so that we can see the beautiful splendor of your light in the next world, where we see the outcome of whatever striving we've done, but we know that our striving is not sufficient. We ask for your mercy. Your Rahma, your Rahma, your Rahma, Ya Allah, Nurun ala Nur, grant us light upon light. Allahumma Ameen. Allahumma Ameen. Wa salli Allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad.